Yo guys, what is up? This is Nick. We are back and it's time to break down uh, after day two. We'll have a day three, which will be tomorrow, obviously. We're going to have some other ones in there. I have, uh, I'll, I'll do one based on betting and odds. Uh, and then I'll actually have whenever the sports books go fully live with all of their odds, which I think they're pretty close. Uh, the one I use, I think, is pretty darn close to being fully live with all the bets. So we'll go over those. We'll go over my favorite um, bets for the tournament for the round one. Um, and we'll have another um, kind of who I would like to see win each game. Um, not necessarily a accurate prediction, but I have some new inputs into the, the to the thing today I've, I've done a little bit more research and so let's hop into this so starting off with virginia we'll go region by re region to the uh elite eight and then we'll we'll uh we'll go through all the regions and we'll come back to the elite eights okay so i'm actually going to switch it up to creighton over kansas state um i think um the question marks with wade and brown um with uh, Brown getting poked in the eye in the Big 12 tournament and Wade dealing with um, a few injuries here and there um, throughout the uh, uh, last couple of weeks or the last couple of games. Um, I, I think Marcus Foster and Creighton get it done. Moving on, um, Kentucky Davidson. I'm actually going to take Davidson in this. Um, always have people get mad when I don't pick Kentucky, but... Um, I think Davidson, they stay hot, they shot, they average 10 made three-pointers per game in the, uh, in, in the tournament, in their conference tournament, uh, including 16, I believe, in the championship game. So I think Davidson gets it done against Kentucky. They stay hot from three-point land, and they, they get it done against Kentucky. Um, I like Arizona, like I said, one of my favorite teams in the tournament. I, I think Alonzo Trier writes the ship from last year, um, where they they should have beat Xavier, um, and and they they didn't, and uh, was it no was it Xavier no it was no they got beat by South Carolina last year I think they lost to South Carolina as the two seed last year probably should have won I think Trier writes the ship with Aiton, um, but we'll get into that more later. I'm going to be moving on Loyola Illinois went back and watched a little bit of tape. Um, not in thoroughly impressed with them. Um, the win at Florida seems a little fluky. Um, not one of my, not not holding a whole lot of weight there. But I don't like Miami that much, so I might as well take an upset here. So then we got Tennessee. I have a lot more upset specials in this, and then I assume by my final one I'll have it narrowed down, and we'll kick out some of these upsets. Kentucky right now, uh, that's kind of a fifty-fifty. But you did see Florida uh, when they got hot against Kentucky. They really, uh, they really turned it up and uh, pretty much just. Kentucky was helpless um, when when Florida was draining those threes. Uh, moving on to the bottom, we have Nevada against Texas. I really think this just has to do with Mo Bamba. Um, I'm going to keep looking, make sure he's good to go. He looks like he's A-OK, -okay, 100% ready, good to go. No problem for Mo Bamba. Um, not 100% good to go, but he'll play, I guess. Uh, but uh, I, I, I think Mo Bamba plays, which I think gets it done. If he does not play, I think the uh, Morris Twins uh, on Nevada, uh, they'll get it done. Um, I, I, they're kind of hit or miss. If they don't play well, there's no way Nevada's winning a game. Uh, if they're on, then um, they can beat a lot of different people, so that should be interesting. Uh, I think... I, th I think um, I think without Mo Bamba, they'll be able to get it done. With Mo Bamba, I think Texas gets it done. I think that's enough elaborated on that. It's pretty that this is that simple. Mo Bamba plays for Texas. Texas wins. If he doesn't, Nevada wins. Okay, so back up to the top. Virginia Creighton. I think Marcus Foster gives Virginia a little bit of issues in the first half, but they clean him up in the second half. Davidson, Arizona, same thing. I think it, Davidson probably stays hot, hits some threes in the first half, and then ends up cooling off in the second um, and Arizona uh, shuts them down in the second. Uh, Davidson probably keeps it a little bit closer, maybe even takes a lead to the ha to the half. So um, wouldn't be surprised at all if Davidson takes like a two or three point lead to the half, and then Aiton and Trier are just too much in the second half. Moving on to Tennessee and Illinois, Loyola, Illinois, like Tennessee. Like I said, I do like Jordan Bone. I think he gets it together after his pitiful uh, SEC championship game, um, and I think Tennessee. Uh, advances to Sweet 16 to play Cincinnati. There will be no changes here. Um, 
I still think Alonzo Trier and DeAndre Ayton are a little bit too much for anybody in this um, bracket, uh, the the East or the South bracket. I think Arizona, um, they're just a little bit too much. I believe Arizona, I believe the South bracket, um, they don't play anything too ridiculously early. Um, I'll have to look more into that. I don't think, yeah, they play at 940. They accommodated them really well. Uh, 940 start and then I believe they're the second half game I believe um the whoever else he is here in Boise I think they who else is in Boise is Bill Self in, Floyd, in Boise is that where Kansas no who else was in Bo- I, I watched I know Kentucky obviously is in Boise who's the other team in Boise there's another there was another team in Boise obviously um who was it i don't know it doesn't really matter oh duke is in boise i think is duke in boise no duke's in Pitt. michigan michigan state it doesn't really matter we'll figure it out but there's another team in boise i believe they play the first game on saturday uh they're pro- i guess it's not guaranteed they're projected to play the first game which means arizona play the afternoon game and then Sweet 16 and Elite 8, not too worried about that. Um, but the later into the night it gets, I think the better it favors Arizona. And the 940 start against David or against Buffalo really helps them out. Um, really a 640 start for them should be no issue. Cincinnati, I think they get it done uh, against uh, Tennessee. Moving on to the West Bracket, Xavier Chalk. Uh, I'm actually going to take Missouri. Um, more than I looked into it, I think Missouri gets it done, especially... Um, with Michael Porter Jr. back. They've had a week, a little bit over a week, to get it together and uh, figure out exactly what they wanted to do with Michael Porter Jr. Uh, and reintegrate him into the mar- into the offense. I think Conzo Martin uh, will get that figured out, and they'll be, they'll be good to go, I think, against Florida State. Uh, Ohio State, San Diego State. I'm going to go against my upset special, and I'm going to actually take Ohio State. I think uh, Kata Bates-Diop... Um, and the rest of the Ohio State team that feels like they've been there for, forever. Um, I think they get it together, and uh, I think they put on a show against San Diego State, and uh, I think the Big Ten has a lot to prove. Um, the good teams are good, and I th- and like people know the top four are good, but I think they want to prove to the for the conference that they weren't pushovers. They didn't get a... Purdue wouldn't have been my choice for a two-seed. I would have picked Michigan State, even though Michigan State's resume is pretty weak. Um but I think the Big Ten has something to prove, and I think they come out and prove it. As much as I don't like the Zags, I don't think UNC uh, Greenboro is the team to beat them. And so we're going to go ahead and take the Zags. Um, moving on, we got Houston. Still like Houston uh, and Michigan to advance. Uh, opinions really haven't changed at all there. Um, Montana is an interesting matchup for Michigan. It's the Michigan who turns the ball over some top bottom or top 10 in least amount of turnovers in the NCAA and Montana is top 10 in forcing them I believe so that's an interesting little matchup there I think Michigan easily takes care of that like Ed Cooley's Providence team I uh, like Kyron Cartwright to take um, to take advantage of Texas A&M and get it done um, North Carolina to beat Lipscomb back up to the top I still like Xavier Missouri is getting a lot of traction as a a team to make it to the Sweet 16. If you're playing on FanDuel, um, they're having this tournament challenge, bracket challenge. If you haven't signed up for FanDuel, it's free. You can win some money or a free entry into a contest. Um, Missouri is becoming kind of a popular pick over there. Um, I'll show you my popular, the pick that I chose. I already locked mine in, um, but the uh, the high seed that I chose, we'll get into that later. But I have the Buckeyes moving on to face Xavier. We'll get in. Ohio battle in the Sweet 16 between Xavier and Ohio State. Moving on to the bottom, still have Michigan beating Houston. I think they're just too much. And then North Carolina. Um, This Michigan team, it's interesting. Um, I actually had forgotten how far they made it last year. Um, Last year, obviously, they had Derek Walton and Xavier Simpson. um, But they beat that Donovan Mitchell Louisville team and uh, should have probably beat um, uh, Oregon which would have put them in the Elite Eight um, against Kansas, I believe. Uh, So that would have been an interesting matchup, a rematch of a couple of years ago for the Final Four. Um, After reviewing, I I did go back and I I did watch the the, 
uh, it actually came up in like my recommended on uh, on my Xbox for I was on YouTube tonight doing some stuff and that the Michigan um, uh, Michigan Oregon game actually came up so I did watch a little bit of that because it popped up um, but enough about that moving on like I said we'll move Xavier um, I do like them to beat Ohio State I do think Ohio State does have a shot I'd be really interested to see Ohio State Michigan uh, but I don't think we get it. Um, and I think Michigan beats North Carolina. I still think the winner of this game, I, I guess this spoils my pick for the Elite, but I still think the winner of Michigan, North Carolina goes Final Four. It's just it's just whoever I pick there, I don't really know what I'm going to do. It's it's a really tough one to make for me. I think Michigan is a little contrarian against North Carolina. It, it, I kind of wish Michigan was in a different bracket um, because then I could have... I could have both because I really like both of the teams um, and having them meet in the Sweet 16 should be a really fun game, uh, whoever ends up winning. Uh, moving on to the Villanova bracket, uh, we have Nova advancing. Um, I'm going to actually go with uh, Buzz's Virginia Tech Hokies over Alabama. I think they play solid defense. I think they shut down Colin Sexton, and I, I think if once they shut Colin Sexton down, it's over. Uh, West Virginia... I'm taking Press Virginia. Uh, you guys know I, I, I like Huggy Bear, and I, I like West Virginia. Um, maybe a little bit too much to my own fault, but um, I think it was a couple of years when they got beat by Sam, or, uh, Stephen F. Austin. Now, I could have had a killer bracket that year if if Stephen F. Austin wouldn't have beat West Virginia and they would have pushed on. I had West Virginia, I think, pegged accurately last year. Um, other than I had Villanova going far last year, I, I did pretty well last year with, I had North Carolina winning it all. Um, and, uh, I had, uh, uh, I had Oregon in the final four as well, but moving on from that, Wichita State Marshall, I'm still sticking with my Marshall pick. I do like Thundering Herd to get it done, mostly because I'm taking West Virginia here. Um, and it's an upset special I'd love to see. Uh, I'd like Marshall from football, so I would like to see them get the W. So that's kind of a personal pick for me. I'm just hoping to see the Thundering Herd get the W. Uh, moving on, we got Florida and the Bonnies. I have St. Bonaventure beating UCLA. Uh, I, I think UCLA is kind of the chalky pick. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And then a lot, a lot of people are having St. Bonaventure, the winner of that game, beat Florida. I think Chris Chioza doesn't want to go out the way he went out in the SEC tournament. I think they pick up one win. If they weren't playing Texas Tech and they were playing, like, Tennessee, which I know they can't have, maybe Michigan State. I would probably have Florida win. Um, if they get hot from the three, they can beat anybody. Um, but I don't think Chris Chioza wants to go out the way that he went out in the Big, uh, the big East, or not the Big East, the SEC tournament. Uh, moving on, we got Purdue and Arkansas. Opinions stay pretty much the same there. And I think Arkansas gives Purdue a whale of a game. Um, they have the guys to kind of stop Isaac Haas, but uh, I think Purdue gets it done. Uh, same with Texas Tech. We're holding chalk here. Villanova, same opinion against Virginia Tech. Um, I don't think Buzz Williams and Virginia Tech have enough. Um, and so I'm going to have Villanova, West Virginia, Texas Tech, Purdue. Um, it's a lot of chalk from me. Um, obviously, I don't think they stay this chalk uh, through the Sweet 16. That's pretty easy chalk so far in these brackets. Um, uh, the lowest seed I have is a 5, and I think that's the lowest seed I'm going to have. So that's kind of, Actually, no. Sorry. Sorry. I will have one upset special coming up. But um, Villanova, I've been on my own little island with Villanova the last three years, um, having one spectacular year when they won it, and then two not so great years where they got upset by uh, Wisconsin and NC State. Uh, but we'll see how it goes this year. Moving on to the Midwest, we got Kansas. I like Seton Hall to get it done. Angel Delgado, uh, I, th I think he. I think they play a little bit more consistently against NC State. They get the, get out with the W. It's upset special time. I dug into these numbers, and without Dante Grantham, Clemson is just awful. They they won some games, but man, were they bad. In Auburn without, oh, what's his name? Um, I forget his name. They have someone out as well. Auburn has one of their better players out as well, and they have been just straight trash too. I, I just can't. If you're going to take an upset special, I think it's here. I'm going to take College of Charleston, and I'm going to take New Mexico State. Um, two of my major upset specials there. That's kind of the big upset section right there. Um, 
I believe they also, yeah, this also favors New Mexico State. It doesn't really favor College of Charleston, but it favors New Mexico State. They get to play out in San Diego um, against Clemson, and I think that favors them well. They play the late-night game at 10. Not that that's late for Clemson, a 10 o'clock game. These kids are in college. That's not late or anything, but I, I, I think... I think it really favors New Mexico State with the time that it's played, the location. I just really like that uh, for New Mexico State. Moving on, TCU, Arizona State, uh, Syracuse. So I have Arizona State. This will depend on, we'll come back and adjust these Thursday night after that game is played. Looking, or not Thursday, Wednesday night when this game is played. Um, but I think Traholder and Shannon Evans get it going. Uh, they heat back up, and I think they knock off Syracuse, and then they knock off TCU. Uh, move on, Michigan State. Um, not much to say about the Spartans. Um, Jaron Evans, or Jaron Jackson, sorry, Jaron Jackson, and uh, and uh, uh, Miles Bridges. I, I I just think they're too much for Bucknell. Uh, it's not the high flying Buck. If it was the high flying Bucknell team from like three years ago that made a million threes. I would probably consider it, but it's not the high flying Bucknell team that I, I think they came in making like is that the that was the Bucknell team that beat Duke and there was that dude that danced after they beat is that Bucknell or was that I think that was Bucknell, <laughs> but that was the high flying three point team. I actually picked that upset because of their three point shooting, which is the same kind of feel I get from Davidson. Uh, moving on, I think Trey Young. I don't think he wants to go out the way that he has. I think they write the ship, beat Rhode Island. This is a lot of, I don't know, in the NCAA tournament for me, it's your guards. And it's, you have to have a guard that can go and get it. You know, we've had, I don't know, when Villanova won, you had Josh Hart uh, that would go get you. We had, uh, we had Joel Berry um, last year. Um we had Nigel Williams Goss in the national championship. We had Michael Carter Williams Final Four, Trey Burke, Kemba Walker, Shabazz Napier. There, are, there are recognizable guards from most of these national championship winning teams that you can remember, or teams that made it to the Final Four. Um, you had on that on that uh, Louisville team. You had Terry Rozier, and uh, there was another one. Kevin Ware was on that team, but he broke his leg. Um, other teams you had, like South Carolina last year, you had Sundarius Thornwell um, and P.J. Dozier. They, they had some other guys, but it was really Sundarius Do Thornwell and a little P.J. Dozier. Um, but that's enough about that. You guys understand that. Um, it's kind of why I love Texas Tech so much with uh, Keenan Evans. But Oklahoma, I think I think they give Duke a whale of a game. And I, I see I see Trey Young maybe 35-10, and 10, 35 points, 10 assists, 4 steals, couple of rebounds I, I think he puts on a show against Duke and I just I just don't think it's enough for him I think they advance I really want to take this upset special and I think I will just for the simple purpose of this video I don't think it'll be an upset special in the final video but this is the bracket where I see chaos ensuing but not like but but we still end up hold on we'll, we'll take Kansas over Seton Hall I, I, I just think Kansas gets it done um, and then I like New Mexico State. Once again, they'll probably get the late night game on Sunday night. Is that Sunday night? 318, is that Sunday? I believe, yeah. 318 would be, yeah. I think they'll get that late night game on Sunday night against the College of Charleston. Even if it's Auburn, I think they'll get the late night game against Auburn. And I think they put them to sleep. Advance to the Sweet 16. Um may come back on this but this is my sleeper pick it's who i picked in the fan duel bracket challenge which locks as soon as you put them in so i'm stuck with new mexico state but i i think new mexico state puts them to sleep and gets to the sweet 16 but once again we end up with kansas duke once again tra holder shannon evans could shit the bed and and lose to syracuse um which is why I'll save a bracket and we'll do a bracket at the end after that game is complete uh, on Thursday night, late Thursday night, uh, or why do I keep saying Thursday? Late Wednesday night, we'll do that. Uh, we'll do another bracket. It'll probably be up at like 1 a.m. for the final final bracket uh, because I need to know who wins this game uh, before I lock everything in. But that gives us the final uh, Elite Eight of Kansas Duke, Xavier, Michigan, Villanova, Texas Tech, and Arizona, Cincinnati. You guys already know where I'm going with this. Arizona, Villanova, 
Duke and Michigan. We'll go over this real quick. I think Marvin Bagley, too much for Kansas, and I think uh, Duke has the, the guard play to stop Devontae Graham and Malik Newman. Uh, Michigan over Xavier. I think Michigan limits the turnovers, plays some decent defense, uh, wins a 78-70 type of game against uh, against Xavier. Um, Mick Cronin, I think, fails to get to a Final Four or again. He has the most consecutive tournament appearances without a Final Four. Uh, or not the both, but he has like, he he's, there are guys that have made it seven or more years in a row. Mick Cronin is one of them. Um, and he's one of the only, he's the only one that hasn't made it to the final four. Um, Texas Tech Villanova should be a whale of game. Um, Keenan Evans against Jalen Brunson should be a whole lot of fun. Um, but I think Villanova comes out on top. And then I didn't really give the analysis on this. I just think Alonzo Trier and, uh, What's his name? DeAndre Ayton. Uh, get it done against Cincinnati. So moving on, it's pretty much going to stay the same for now. We're chalking it up. I think this is going to end up being my final four. Alonzo Trier and DeAndre Ayton against Jalen Brunson and Mikael Bridges. Uh, really like the idea of this game. I think it should be a really nice game. And uh, I, I still think Villanova comes on top. For the sake of this video and for the sake of a little bit of a different bracket, we'll go ahead and take Arizona here. Um, I think if Arizona wins, it's a little bit high scoring of a game, like an 88-83 game type of game. I think Arizona uh, packs on the points in a win. Uh, and so that's going to do it, guys, though. that I, I like this bracket. Um, it's kind of rounding into form. Uh, I'll continue to research and look at different things, and we'll we'll figure out exactly what I, what I like and what I don't. Um, we got some new teams entering, like Ohio State, New Mexico State. This is kind of just for the sake of the video, moving Arizona State there. Uh, kind of a little bit too ambitious, I'm, I'm sure, but, um, you know, not, I mean, it's not insane. It's a little bit, it's a little bit nutty, but it's not, like, clinically insane to have that. But uh, I do really enjoy this bracket. We'll go ahead and I'll have the betting and stuff like that up, as well as I will put together... What am I trying to say? I'll try. I'll put together another bracket tomorrow night. Um, I might do one before. I'll do one with my thoughts before the uh, first four or last four in, um, and then I'll do one and maybe after the last four in, uh, so we can get a little bit of an updated perspective depending on who wins and how they look. If if um, if UCLA or if St. Bonaventure just comes out and smokes the other one, maybe my opinion changes on Florida. I think for my own personal my own personal hap I don't know it's not really happiness but my own personal enjoyment I don't want Chris Chioza to go out um one of my favorite college basketball players um uh, I, I was actually thinking today about favorite college basketball players and, and guys like Marshall Henderson are up there Chris Chioza um really guys like that are up there for me um I I was gonna sit down and maybe I'll do it um I'll, I'll make a video of it like after the tournament or something like that talking about my favorite college basketball players of all time but that's gonna do it for this video guys i've rambled on long enough we got arizona cutting down the nets against nova uh and so i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace out